This is Sol Johnson in activity 6336 for the packet tracer. This is designing and implementing a VLSM address sync scheme. Now when you start this, it'll be different on every single one that you do of these. So I just used whatever one they gave me and they gave me some random numbers for host and I had to make my own table here. And I probably do another video on on subnetting, but basically um, when I made my own subnet, uh, I did it based upon what they wanted out of here. So basically I figured out how many host bits and whatnot um, that we needed and um, the allowable host for each one that's available when I do those those host bits. And here, see, I, uh, I broke it all down to um, each one holding so many hosts for how many host bits I was doing. And then this was part of it right here for, because they ask in here, they say right here how to do the addressing scheme. And that's how I figure out a lot of the, the numbers in here too once I made my breakdown of my network. So basically, they just wanted you to assign the first usable address on, on one of our routers for our two LAN links and our, and our wide area network link. So, um, so you did a lot of first addresses there and then the next address was for your switches. And then um, that also made it easy to know what the default gateway was because your routers, the one switch is the number right below it. So um, then your next step was to use the last usable IP addresses to for all the hosts. So basically each one's host was the last usable address. And that's how I came up with each one of these right here. So let's go ahead and we can put some of the commands in. So they only really cared that you do building one, but I ended up just doing both of them. All right, so we'll go here in our building two. And go ahead and go in here, do enable. And we'll just follow the commands here that I wrote out to make it easier. And we're gonna go to interface G0 slash zero. We're going to do IP address 10.11.48.113 with subnet mask of 255.255.255.248. And we're going to do no shut. And then we're going to do interface G0 slash 1. IP address 10.11.48. Dot one with something the master two fifty five dot two fifty five dot two fifty five dot one ninety two and then also do no shut and then interface s zero slash zero slash zero slash zero with the IP address of ten dot eleven dot forty eight dot one twenty two with something the mask of two fifty five dot two fifty five dot two fifty five dot two fifty two and no shut. So then we're done with router 2. So if you just do uh, show run, you can press the space bar to skip kind of ahead here a little bit. This is the address that you should see right in here. So let's go ahead and go to our building 1, which so I label them right here to make it easier and also the interfaces so when I looked at my graph earlier or my uh, my table basically that's how I was able to determine which network was which really quickly anyways let's get into here and do enable do conf t so for configure terminal and then we're going to do interface G0 slash 0 and do the IP address of 10.11.48.97 with subnet mass of 255.255.255.240. Then we're going to do no shut and we're going to do interface 
g0 slash 1 with IP address of 10.11.48.65 with subnet master 255.255.255.224 then do no shut so you want to make sure that it actually stays on or actually turn the port on in case it's off and do interface s0 slash 0 slash 0 slash 0 and do IP address of 10.11.48.121 with subnet master 255.255.255.252 and do the no shut and that no shut is so important when you use actual real routers there's a lot of times you'll forget to turn the ports on and if you just have it as habit to always put no shut on the ones that you know are going to be on and just makes things a lot easier for you later all right so our next step is we're going to be setting up our switch right here and they just want us to do ASW3 you can't really actually access the other switches so we'll go right here into the command prompt here and do enable and do configure terminal and do interface G0 slash 1 and do switch port mode access and then switch port access VLAN 1 and then we'll do IP address oh actually this next step is going to be I have to go into interface VLAN 1 then I do IP address 10.11.48.114 with subnet mask of 255.255.255.248 and then I did no shut which that works for that part and then default actually you have to go and do exit and then under the conf T area then you do IP default gateway of 10.11.48.113 and there we go and then when you actually look at the final results here you see it's 30 out of 30 when you check the results everything has a check mark next to it and we didn't do any connectivity uh, test on here but we can so let's go ahead we didn't really do any default routes on the router, so it's not going to go from, you know, outside the router here. But you can go from host D to our building 2 there, and you'll see that it's successful. And I'll notice that host C. I'll go right here. Of course, you can go router to router. That's successful. It's just going from host to host up here. It won't go because we didn't configure the, the router correctly see everything successful within these and there we go